Okay, so today I will show you how I only needed one hour to create 100 custom teams for this clock, which is called Nixie Cube Clock, and also for this clock, which is called RGB Glow Tube Clock. And here you can see the preview of all 100 teams. There are all kinds of styles, so hopefully everyone can choose their favorite. Actually, please let me know in the comment section which one do you like the most. But let's get back to our clocks, because they both look nice, and they both have small displays, which can display any images. I've already recorded videos how to create custom teams, but even the simplest one takes some time. So creating 100 of those in one hour seems impossible. And that's why I will cheat a little bit today by using the AI tools to draw those images for me. But before we get to it, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. And as the name suggests, PCBWay is online service for creating PCBs, but also 3D printing and CNC machining. And on top of that, they have a store where you can actually buy those RGB glow tube clocks for just only $50. And if you prefer real cube clocks, you can get those as well. So thank you PCBWay and let's get back to our video and to our AI tool. My tool of choice for today is called Adobe Firefly and it can generate AI images as well as text effects. And you can see some examples on this main page and they all look perfect. So for example, this flower one, if I click it, I have all the options to customize the output. First of all, I want to create text effects for individual digits going from 0 all the way up to 9. So 10 different digits. And if I click the generate button, it will show me those images. If I don't like how this looks like, I can switch between four different versions down here. And I can tweak the result even more on the right side. I also have some predefined effects, for example this lava one, so if I click it, it will change the prompt down here, and if I click the generate button, it will show me a dropping lava effect. Obviously the green background is not matching the lava effect, so I'll change it to for example grey, and I kind of like this result. However, the displays in those clocks are quite narrow, they look something like this, which means that for this particular font, this area and this area will be empty, so it would make a sense to select font which is more condensed, for example this popular font, and if I click Journey button, now it's much better. Now as for the background color, you can select from a few predefined ones, but what I will do is I will select transparent background color, which means that I can change the background color later on in the graphic editor. So let's download this image by clicking this button and selecting download and move to Photopea, which is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop. What I want to do here is to export this image as 10 individual images in the correct size and in the correct file format. For both clocks, the image size of those individual digits should be 135 by 240 pixels. One clock requires those images to be in the JPEG file format and the R1 the PNG file format. Thankfully, the Photopea can export in both file formats. But before exporting, we need to resize it and give it some background. Since I might replace this image later on, I will convert it into the smart object by right-clicking and selecting convert to smart object. Then I will create a new layer, select the selection tool and set the size to be fixed size of 135 by 240 pixels, which is the size of the individual displays. Select the selection, which is this small one, and fill it with any color by going to edit fill and fill it for example with black color. So this is our first display. And we want to show one digit over this area, so I'll move the background layer up on top and rename it to digits. And then resize it by going to edit transform scale and scale it to maybe 33 or so percent and move it over like so. And then when I press the Ctrl Alt G shortcut, it will only display those digits over this layer. Actually, let's rename this layer to BG background and also convert it to smart object. Then I will select both layers and group it together and rename the group to dash e dash zero. And the dash e dash part is important because if you have the string in the layer name, then you can go to file export layers and you can only export layers which starts with dash e dash in the layer name. But we will not export it yet because we need nine more digits. There are multiple ways how you can copy the layer in the Photopea. You can right click and select duplicate layer or you can just drag the layer with the Alt key being pressed and that will also create a copy. We need to of course move the digits layer so we can see the digit number 1 and then repeat those steps for every single digit. So digit number 2 and so on and so on. Don't forget to change the group names to go from 0 up to 9. And I will also change the canvas size by going to image canvas size to be only around those digits, although this step is not required. There are still a few details that we need to tweak. I would like the background color to be gray and not black. I will open the smart layer by double clicking the thumbnail and then for example create a new color fill layer. With the new background color click the OK button, then file save smart object and close it. And since we are using smart objects for every single background, all of those are updated. The second thing is the digit number one. 
even when we've included spaces in between those digits, I can still see part of digit number 0 and part of digit number 2, so I need to hide it somehow, for example by copying this background layer, then move it up on top, then applying the layer mask by clicking this icon and drawing inside the mask using the brush tool, so make it much bigger, for example like so, set the color to be black and then draw inside where I want to show something, so I want to show the digit number 1 in here, actually let me draw everything and then switch to white color and only draw around those edges to hide the digit number 0 and digit number 2 like so. And I think that at this point we can export those individual digits. And again the file format is depending on the used display, I will export both the JPEG and PNG files by going to file export layers, first select the PNG file format and click the export layers button, then select the JPEG file format and click the export layers button again. Now we have both the JPEG files as well as the PNG files in the proper size, which means that now we need to run the software and upload those images to the clocks and then create 99 more teams. The software for a smaller clock is called LXCube IPS and it looks like this. Here you want to click the custom pictures button and select our 10 exported digits, click the open button and then click the upload button. And this is how it looks like on the real display. By the way, all those displays are IPS, so the colors are bright and nice. The software for the bigger clock with 6 displays is also called LXCube IPS, but it's a different version. You have to click the refresh button and select the port with the CH340 inside. And in here to upload a custom picture, we need to do a few more steps. We need to go into the IMG folder inside the software installation folder and replace those 10 images with our new JPEG images the ones that we just exported. Then inside the software you first click the compile custom picture button and once this is compiled you click the upload image button. And this is how the team looks like on our real clock. Not only we have 6 displays but they also have RGB backlight which can be set in the menu. Again all the details are described in the separate video, the link is in the description. So we know how to create a team and we know how to upload it to both clocks, so now comes the fun stuff, and that's of course creating 99 more teams. Now what I haven't told you yet is that the Firefly is a paid tool, but you can also use it for free. There is a restriction of how many images you can generate in one month, I believe it's 25. With the paid version, I believe the number is 1000. I also haven't told you how much time it takes to generate a new image, so let's actually do that right now. I will click the jungle wine text effect and click the generate button and at the same time run the stopwatch, so it's 1 second, 2, 3 seconds. I just hope you will not close this video right now, it takes a while. And now it is, so it takes between 8 to 10 seconds to generate the image, which means that if we need to generate 100 of images, we would need around 13 minutes, which is, I guess, fine. It will definitely take you more time to enter those prompts. When generating my set of 100 teams, I of course started with those predefined ones because they all look great. I mean those flowers are very beautiful, as well as the snake skin. The driftwood is especially nice, we've already seen the jungle wine, then we have some leaves and digits that looks like a tiger, again we've already seen the lava effect, the icicles are very nice, and then we have the decay effect which is nice as well but it's hard to tell what's going on. The next section of text effects is called material and texture, starting with bundled color for wires, the pink balloon, broken glass from sea, blue jeans, the plastic wrap, some nice marble stones, a very interesting metallic effect, some rainbow whatever this is, and the last effect in this section is steampunk. The last section in this predefined themes is food and drink, starting with the bread toast. I like how it fills those shapes nicely. The next one is gingerbread. Sushi is kind of strange, I actually haven't included it in my set of 100 themes. The pasta looks interesting, but maybe way too complicated. A donut effect is very nice. The orange is okay, I guess. Popcorn is quite interesting, I like it a lot. Then we have chocolate cookies. And then finally the ice cream, which doesn't look like an ice cream, but it's still a nice effect. So just by exporting those predefined themes, we already have 27 themes, which means that we only need another 73. And I will not go over every single theme because you can download those on GitHub, but let me show you the ones which I think looks great. Anything that you can find in the nature works great, like for example this beach sand, or those seashells. The clouds also look nice, but they are kind of small and I haven't found a way how to make those bigger even when I type big and huge. All kinds of rocks and stones also work nicely. And then also branches, leaves, trees and stuff like that. If you can think of something you can eat, you can probably turn it into a text effect like this carrot, the french fries with ketchup, or for example coffee beans. 
any kind of animal fur also works nice and it doesn't quite matter if this is the generic one or if you specify the animal like cat in here or a brown dog. When we talk about animals, all kinds of feathers also work nicely. The next interesting area is all kinds of ropes and chains and actually all kinds of materials made from threads like for example this crochet thing. It also works nicely if you want to fill those digits with some small elements like those blueberries, rubber balls, some matchsticks or something like a wheat. Obviously I've tried hundreds of prompts and one of those that I like is this fingerprint effect, this rusted steel or a lemon tree. This one is probably my favorite. Anything more technical usually doesn't produce nice results, but the computer motherboard might be the exception, together with the green PCB. Again, you can download all the individual themes on GitHub, or of course you can go to firefly.adobe.com and try it by yourself. If you find anything useful and nice, please feel free to share it down in the comment section. And that's pretty much it for today. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.